Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation with 11th powers. So we could probably call this a undesic polynomial or just 11th power is fine. And we have 55 times x to the power 11 minus 89 times x to the 10th power equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this is going to be a pretty interesting equation because the power is so high that we don't really have a general formula. Remember, anything starting with the quintic has no general solutions. But one of the things that you should hopefully recognize is the coefficients, 55 and 89. What does that remind you? If that doesn't ring a bell, I'm going to go ahead and start writing some numbers. Hopefully, that'll make sense. So I'm going to start with one and then write another one. And then the next number in my sequence is going to be obtained by adding the 1 and the 1. So that's going to give me a 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then I'll do the same thing for the last two terms. 1 and 2 will give me a 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. And then I'll get an 8. And then 13. 21. Are you following? And then we'll get a 34. And then we'll, we'll get a 55 and 89. And then so on and so forth. I don't need to go any further because I got my numbers 55 and 89. Hopefully... You do know that this is called a Fibonacci sequence, and you also hopefully know that the generating function for this sequence, which can be written as n equals 1 to infinity, f sub n, x to the power n, which is basically a power series whose coefficients are Fibonacci numbers. So f sub 1 plus f sub 2x, and then f sub 3x squared, so on and so forth, right? And actually, it's that's not the case. We should start with f. Okay, sorry about that. f sub 1, x, and then f sub 2x squared, and so on and so forth. And then, this is going to equal something in terms of x, of course. And that's actually going to be x over 1 minus x minus x squared. If you kind of look into the generating functions, uh, you'll get that. And the nth Fibonacci number, basically, which is this one, uh, is represented by f sub n. So this is going to be the nth Fibonacci number. And we're going to go ahead and actually write it in a different way, looking at uh, the roots of some of these polynomials. And f sub n, in general, actually can be written as 1 over root 5 multiplied by 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the nth power minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the nth power. So it has a lot of radicals in it, but guess what? Every time you get an integer. And of course, in this case, n is greater than or equal to 1, and n is an integer. So to be able to work this problem, since its coefficients are consecutive Fibonacci numbers, as you can see, we're going to go ahead and consider the following polynomial, which has these as its roots. 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus root 5 over 10. You know what that polynomial is? x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And notice that we kind of have something similar in the denominator. Anyways, that's a long story. Let's go ahead and take a look at this polynomial. So its roots are 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. But that's not the most interesting part. The most interesting part is how this uh, polynomial grows to give us the higher powers in terms of the linear term. In other words, from here, I'm going to isolate x squared and write it as x squared equals x plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate x cubed. Let me go ahead and do it on, on the side. x cubed is x squared times x, and which is x plus 1 times x, which is x squared plus x. Now, x squared is going to bring x plus 1, and then another x is going to give me 2x plus 1. And then you want to do x to the fourth power. You either multiply x cubed by x, which is x squared plus x, which is 2x plus 1. And then from here, you're going to get 2x squared plus x. And that's going to be 2 times x plus 1, which is 2x plus 2 plus x. And that's going to be 3x plus 2. Going in this pattern, you're going to get the following. Without further ado, let me give you more terms. The x to the fifth power is going to be 5x plus 3. And then x to the 6 is going to be 8x plus 5. You get the idea? 3 plus 2 is 5, so this number is obtained by 3 plus 2. 
and three is just copied, and then the same thing happens on over, over, over and over. X to the seventh is gonna be 13X plus eight. X to the eighth is going to be 21X plus 13, and we're almost there. X to the ninth is gonna be 34X plus 21. You recognize this? These are the Fibonacci numbers, yes. And X to the tenth is gonna be 55X plus 34. Notice we're so close to x to the power 11, which is going to be 89x plus 55. Aha, uh -huh, we got it. So here's the two things that we're going to be using. So in other words, if x is one of these, then all these equations are true. In other words, if you take 1 plus root 5 over 2 and raise it to the 10th power, it's the same thing as 55 times this number plus 34. And if you don't believe that, you can definitely go ahead and check it out. Numerically, by hand, it will be pretty interesting exercise. See if you can get that. And the same thing is true for 11th power and for any power. But let's go ahead and focus on these two powers. Why? Because we're trying to solve an equation, and my equation contains these two powers. What is that equation? 55x to the power 11 minus 89x to the power 10 equals 1. So how do I go from these two equations to that? Here's what we're going to do. Suppose we don't know what this is going to equal at the end. Surprise! Aha! Let's go ahead and replace x to the 11th with 89x plus 55 and the 89 times x to the 10th. The x to the 10th will be replaced with 55x plus 34. Now, one good thing about doing this is that, of course, there's an x here. These two terms are opposites. Look at the plus minus signs. So when they're added, they're going to disappear. But let's still write it. F 55 times 89x plus 55 squared minus 89 times 55x. Notice that. Minus 89 times 34. Now, what is that going to equal? Well, these two terms are going to cancel out, leaving us with something simpler, at least something numerical. And this is actually going to equal 1. So if x is 1 plus minus root 5 over 2, then this equation is satisfied. Therefore, 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus root 5 over 2 are both solutions. But there is a problem with having two solutions. Can there not be two solutions or more solutions? Obviously, this is like an undesic polynomial. Come on. <laughs> so here's the thing. If you go ahead and write this as f of x equals 55x to the 11th minus 89x to the 10th minus 1, obviously, I'm looking for the x-intercepts of this equation, right? Or you can write this equation as follows and then set it equal to 1, which would mean the intersection point. Same idea. But let's go ahead and differentiate this function. If you differentiate it, you're going to get 55 times x to the power 55. Okay, I'm supposed to bring down the 11. If 55 times 11 times x to the power 10 minus 89 times 10 times x to the power 9. And the derivative of 1 is 0, right? And then if you set this equal to 0, you're going to be getting x to the 9 on the outside. You can go ahead and take that out. You're going to get 55 times 11 times x minus 89 times 10 equals 0. From here, you get two solutions. Isn't that interesting? We got like started off with an undesic and then we differentiated and now we ended up. So the derivative has two roots. One of them is x equals 0. The other one is going to be 89 times 10 divided by 55 times 11. Do you want to know what it looks like? Well, that number is approximately 1.47. And you got to be careful because this number is less than 1 plus root 5 over 2. So that's going to be very important. So what happens here? We have two extremas or extrema. Is that how you say it? One at 0, one at 1.47-ish. So our function is actually going to curve like this. And a horizontal line can actually intersect, which includes the x axis because it's going to intersect the x-axis right at some point we could have two three solutions but i don't think there's any tangency because we would get even powers 
So I'm thinking either there is one solution or three solutions. But you can't have three solutions because we only have two possibilities, right? So there should be only one solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and hopefully the graph will make much more sense. First of all, the real solution to this equation is, yes, you guessed it right, the golden ratio. Okay, about 1.61833. And then, how do you find the real solution on Wolfram Alpha? I thought there was going to be some interesting operation or formula. No, it's just an approximation, but it's pretty good. Anyways, because the power is so high. And here's the graph. You don't see the bottom part, but as you can see, there's going to be a curving down here. And then one of them is going to be a 0, 0, is going to be a max. And there's going to be a min. But it's only going to intersect, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I graphed these two separately, unfortunately. It's the same thing, you get the idea. So just correct it as f of x equals this, and you'll get it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.